Markets are rallying on Monday. The S&P 500 is up more than 1.5%. The Nasdaq is up. Gold is also up more than $18 as of 3 p.m. Eastern time. Joining me today to talk about this and much more is Gary Wagner, editor of thegoldforecast.com. Gary, welcome back to the show. It's a big difference from last Monday. You and I hadn't had a chance to talk then, but we had a sell-off, a flash sell-off of 2% pretty much across the board. What happened? What's going on with this turnaround that we're seeing? That we're seeing this week. Well, it's a, it's an interesting mix of events that we're seeing this week. Of course, gold is up 18. And the, the most important takeaway for me is not so much the current high, but the intraday low that it hit in trading earlier this morning when it touched on the 100-day moving average. Because I believe what that did was the fact that it held at the 100-day moving average. It initiated A, short covering, and B, most importantly, buying the dip mentality as this market held a key level. And so for me, what we are seeing today in gold is a relief after the congestion and sell-off we saw last week. Okay. And what are you looking at in terms of the next levels? Because we're not actually hitting the $2,000 level again. And we haven't seen that since it reached all-time highs earlier in the summer. That is correct. I mean, right now we have a couple of different levels of resistance, 1880, of course, 1860, which was the uh, area that it opened at a week ago today, and then 1900. Those are our new levels that we would watch for on the upside. In terms of support levels, I think the 100-day moving average is key. What I'm noticing that's interesting is stocks rising and falling in tandem with gold. So last Monday, for example, everything sold off. Today, everything's up. Why do you think this correlation exists right now? Well, the only time you really get a correlation where you get both U.S. equities and gold and silver running in tandem to the upside is when you have central bank intervention and quantitative easing, because that is the unusual circumstance where borrowing power is very, very inexpensive. Cost of borrowing money is zero, basically, maybe a half a percent to a percent. And that, of course, will entice uh, the equity traders to bid that higher. At the same time, the fact that the Federal Reserve is doing quantitative easing, uh, that alone is enough to really ignite gold to higher prices. A, a fear of inflation, which they're now going to let run hotter past 2% if they get it there. And the fact that they are purchasing $120 billion of assets per month. And that, in, in essence, is printing money by the Federal Reserve. Of course, only the Treasury can print money. But in that way, they're adding to the money supply, the liquidity. And that is bullish for gold. So it's that rare circumstance where you get uh, really strong moves by the Federal Reserve to kind of prop the economy up as we face the economic contraction that currently exists. Gold's been trading sideways for quite some time. It seems to me that gold investors are positioning themselves for major moves either way for the elections. Would you say that's true or is there something else that maybe you're looking at? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, as far as the election goes, there's a lot of uncertainty about the outcome of the election. Of course, tomorrow you have the presidential debates. And so that uncertainty as to where it's going to go is really a recipe for gold to trade higher. And that's what we're witnessing. Okay. Well, gold did trade lower last week due to some uh, political tensions as well with the House, uh, the Republicans and the Democrats kind of disagreeing over whether or not uh, there should be a, a Republican-nominated uh, justice of the court. Uh, but uh, you're saying that gold should be traded as a safe haven. Well, you didn't see that last week, certainly. Can this continue to happen? Well, I think what we saw last week in terms of uh, gold prices going lower was disappointment that there was no fiscal stimulus. The Federal Reserve has done everything that they can. They've lowered interest rates. They're making money easy to get to. But without fiscal stimulus, those that are unemployed, those that are underemployed, those that are experiencing hardship right now are not getting the kind of relief that they need to pay their bills and feed their family. And that concern, I believe, is really that disappointment is why we saw gold move so harshly to the downside last week.
This week, there's talk about the potential that there will be some sort of a stimulus package coming out before the election. And that optimism, I believe, is part of what is fueling gold right now. Okay. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, stocks have been trading downward. And I'm going to ask the viewers right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below whether or not you think risks are to the upside or downside. R Gary, what do you think? We've seen a sell-off in the tech sector. We've seen more recently a sell-off in deep cyclical sectors as well. Uh, leading some economists to believe that fundamentally the economy is really not very strong. And so that's what's being reflected in the sell-off that we have seen. Where can we go from here? Well, it's interesting. Um, everybody was looking for that V-shaped bottom in U.S. equities. And obviously, we did not get it quite like that. But we have seen the market really trade to all-time highs as recently as, what, two weeks ago. So typically, when the NASDAQ or the S&P, and in, in both cases, they hit all-time record new highs two weeks ago, you will get a scenario in which you get profit-taking coming into the market the next week. And that's what I think we saw last week. What do you make of the uh, dollar right now? We've seen a decline in DXY today as we speak. Long-term in the last three months, the, down, the downtrend is very prominent. But in the last couple of weeks, it's kind of been flat. Are we seeing consolidation in the dollar as well? Well, I've actually looked at the fact that we've seen it hit some lows and bounce off and move up tremendously. In fact, in the month of September alone, uh, the dollar has gained almost three full percent. I believe on Friday it was about 2.75. With today's move, it's going to be about 2.2, 2.3% in the month of September. So we've definitely seen dollar strength. And that's another reason that last week, we saw such a dynamic downside move in gold and silver because they're paired against the U.S. dollar. We are seeing something different today. We're seeing dollar weakness. And so not that I, I think that the dollar weakness is going to continue, but that's been the overall long-term trend with the short-term trend being a dollar strength. And that really began last week. Gary, we've talked a lot about the dollar uh, on our show. We know about the Federal Reserve story. We know about monetary policy and its effects on the dollar, short term and long term. I want to know what you think about other factors driving the U.S. dollar besides monetary policy. The most interesting thing we witnessed last week when we saw the dollar really rising and since the beginning of the month is that unlike usual circumstances where people flock to a safe haven asset and, and the preferred asset is gold, we saw traders flock to the dollar, cash is king, so to speak. So I think one of the things that we saw with recent dollar strength is the fact that that became the safe haven go-to asset for safety. And that's something we haven't seen in quite some time. Okay, let's do a speed round now, Gary. Uh, I'm going to give you an asset, and uh, you're going to tell me if you like it or not like it, buy or sell. Gold. Okay. I think that's a buy. Silver. Buy. S&P 500. Right now, it's a buy. Tech stocks. Very much a buy. Right. So it seems like you like everything, Gary. Is there something you don't like? Uh, you know, my sense right now is I like the NASDAQ over the S&P and definitely over the Dow. And we've seen the tech sector really race on fire lately. And so that is my favorite in terms of the equities itself. I think that gold is benefiting, as we spoke about, for a couple of reasons, Fed intervention and the fact that it's a safe haven asset during a period where we could see some uncertainty come into the market. We're literally, what, about a month away from the election. And so that's going to create uncertainty in the marketplace. Analysts have said that the FANG stocks, so the big tech stocks, Google, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, Tesla, those companies, they, they've been really driving up the index in the last year or so. And recently, in the last couple of weeks, they've seen weaknesses. Now, two questions. Can you continue to see weaknesses in, let's say, Tesla and Apple? And two, can you see maybe a decoupling from the, the large tech stocks into, into determining the rest of the index? Can the rest of the index move in a different direction, finally, is what I'm asking. Well, the rest of the index or parts of the index could move 
inversely to the FANG stocks. I mean, Tesla took a huge hit right after it split. It went to what, about a little bit over 2,000, five to one split, comes in at around 500, trades down to about $350, and now is back over $400. We saw the same kind of profit taking last week in the other ones. Apple came down tremendously. Google was down, Amazon was down. And I think that we're seeing the reversal of that this week. So whether or not there's a decoupling, I think that there's been genuinely a decoupling anyways in terms of performance. But whether or not you're asking if they'll remove it from the weighted index itself, I don't think so. Because it's, it's good for equities to, to report that equities are up. Well, just from an investor standpoint, like let's say, you know, an investor is thinking to himself, I don't want to buy the S&P 500 index or I don't want to buy the NASDAQ index because I'm bearish on Google. Uh, when you think about it, that's a silly thing to say. You're bearish on a few companies and you're not going to buy the entire index. But that's, been, that's what's been happening, isn't it? Like the entire index has been denominated by just a few of these big players. Yes. And to, I, I'll say two things to that matter. First of all, that is correct. And there's a reason those particular stocks have been moving higher. There are companies that in the light of economic contraction globally continue to do well. There's continues to be a need for it. Then you've got players like Zoom and other equities that are related to the work at home mentality that has really come out of the economic contraction and the global pandemic. And so we're seeing that. And then secondly, I had a mentor when I was just getting started in the industry. And he told me, Gary, it's not a stock market. It's a market of stocks. And to, to what he was saying is that there's always stocks that are going to be doing better than the average, outperforming the average. There's always going to be certain companies that are head and shoulders above the fray. And I think that that's what we're seeing with the, the tech heavy stocks within the NASDAQ itself, like Tesla, like Google, like Facebook. And I think that they will continue to do well. So I think what a lot of traders and investors are, are, are thinking about right now as they watch our show is whether or not they should be selling into today's strength. Personally, I believe in buying the breakouts rather than selling into strength. The key to today's move in gold is twofold. One, the fact that it hit an intraday low at the 100-day moving average and bounced off. And the second factor is it's now trading above Friday and Thursday's high of the day. And so if it maintains a price point that's as strong as we go into the close, it certainly bodes well for the bulls. It tells me that they are regaining control. And it tells me that we could see gold prices move higher this week. Do you have a medium-term target? Right now, it's got to be around 1900 really is the, the area I think it will find some resistance. 1860 and 1880, it's already really taken out those particular areas. And I think that that's going to be minor resistance, if anything. 1900 is definitely the brass ring. I just spoke to an investor, um, another guest of mine, who said that he's all in cash right now uh, because he thinks gold's going to go down as well. How much cash are you holding on the sidelines right now? That's a good question. I don't have a direct response for that. I think that after yesterday's dramatic sell-off, I think what we're witnessing in U.S. equities as well as the precious metals is traders moving their cash into investments that they think will perform. Well, generally, I mean, what's your philosophy here? Because would you... This, I guess, affects how much cash you're holding and how defensive you would get. Would you rather lose a little bit in the markets if you're if you're hedged properly, or would you rather uh, be safe and give up on potential profits? What would you, what what would make you feel worse? The well, no, I I go with the third choice. I would rather have enhanced volatility and enhanced uh, danger, so to speak, or risk 
so that I could potentially get rewarded for those major moves that we're witnessing. So when we get a market where you've got the Dow up 500, you've got gold up $18, this to me signals a time to enter and not a time to fade these markets. I think that trying to to fade U.S. equities, for example, when they're on a runaway move to all-time highs is kind of like standing in front of a a freight train and hoping that that will stop as it approaches you. It probably won't. And I think that trying to, to fade strength is, is that same kind of move. It's very, very risky. And I, I myself wouldn't be comfortable with that. Standing on the sidelines for conservative investors, it makes sense. But even if they're standing on the sidelines, be 20 or 30% in terms of putting moving money from cash into a portfolio. Uh, for those that are a little bit more risk uh, friendly, so to speak, then they want to maybe have 50 or 60% of a portfolio, not in cash, but in gold, in silver, and U.S. equities. Gary, that was an excellent talk. Thank you again for your thoughts. I'm sure the viewers will appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure to be here as always. Thank you for watching Kiko News. Stay tuned. We'll have much more. And don't forget to comment below what you think will go up or down next week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates. Mm -hmm.